Hello friends, and welcome back. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I might um, kind of add a little bit more to uh, um, to this uh, to this video that I did, um, I think last Friday. Yeah, last Friday I tried to do a live stream. Um, so it's been a little while. Um, I am going to update it. I, I did a blog post. I'm just going to go ahead and go into this. So I wrote a blog post a little while ago. You can see it's showing uh, June 3rd um, that that kind of catches up to uh, to where to where we were. So I had okay. Let's just back up for a second. So I had written a blog post about self-hosting a font in SvelteKit. So then what I did in the video was I took that a little bit further and I built a basic blog. <laughs> And then I decided to follow um, Dennis Ivey's lead and uh, Sulamita's lead and actually, you know, did a little blog post um, ahead of uh, another video. So the first part of this blog post, which I will link in the description below, um, kind of catches us up to where the last video ended. Okay, so as we can see, so if we go into... Um, uh, posts.svelte, and by the way, and I, I I don't know if it's an update on SvelteKit, or maybe I just wasn't doing it correctly before. Search for references, search for comments, no, refactor. Uh, this is going to become index.js. So now if we go to slash blog, now we can see we have our blog posts. <laughs> Um, so we got up to fetching of the blog posts and, you know, all this sort of fun stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of update things a bit. Okay, so let's just kind of go through. I'm going to style it a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit extra functionality that, uh, that we didn't have before. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. So... Let's just take a look at our index.js file. So this is returning the the posts, right? And if we look at the the um, the blog post itself that I have here, I added in uh, one extra little functionality that I don't know if it's in here. Yes, yeah, not in here. So we're going to create a utils.js file. Utils. Um, we are going to export const convert date published and I'm just going to copy and paste this. All this is going to do is it's going to take our date that we have. I don't know how to get rid of that. It's going to take our date. If we look at foobar, our date is 2022.4.15. It will split via the hyphens and it will say the year, month, and day are the, the splits. And then it's just going to return a bit of a nicer, um, a nicer looking version of our date. Okay, so then all we need to do, if we go back into um, index.js, I'm just going to add in one other thing. Published is going to be convert date, and it will be post.metadata.date. And we need to import date, import, or I should say convert date. And because we're using SvelteKit and it's in the lib, we can just do dollar sign lib slash utils.js. Okay, good. So that should be set. Um, now what we need to do, we need to clean this up a little bit. Let me see if we need to clean this up a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's work on the list view. So you can see here, new stuff, new stuff. So there is some styling that I have in here that we're going to just handle. So in here, we just have H screen and background gray 200. I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to go in here now. So I'm just going to delete all of this. And I can't, unfortunately, I can't right now, um, you know, make that wider, but we'll just have to deal for now. So we're going to do BG white padding top for about 16 and padding bottom is 20. Um, that's just to kind of give it a little space top and bottom. We're going to do padding X of four, um, small, a little bit more padding, 
and then large uh, padding X. Uh, how do I have it here? Padding X of eight. And then we want large padding top of 24 and large padding bottom of 28. So that's just kind of setting things up. I don't know where it went. Oh, we're not actually displaying the posts. Duh. Uh, um, posts. There we go. So there's a little bit of padding there. Uh, next, we're going to um, kind of set the width on, a, on an internal div. So we're going to do max width large, MX auto, and on large screens, max width 7XL. And again, we look at this. And it's just kind of moved a little bit. Um, you know what, I think I'm going to move this blog post out of here for now. You can follow along if you want to, but it's just going to be easier um, to see how things are changing in here as, as we update it. Now we want to add in our, our header. We're just going to, we're going to have some sort of title here. So we're going to declare a border on the bottom, border bottom gray 200 and padding bottom of six. And we will set an H2 text 3xl and if you recall from the last video and from the app.css file our h2 should have the serif font so it should have sprat instead of um, uncut song song i did it again tracking tight font semi bold and uh, we'll do text gray 900 i'm just going to pull up the blog post here uh, on my other screen just to see if there's anything else and on small screens text 4xl and we'll just say recent posts there we go so we've got this ni nice little recent posts thing here <laughs> now we want to um, work on the container for the actual posts themselves margin top of 12 we want a grid because we want to space them um, you know side by side or top and bottom and grid is when you're doing something like this, it's just easier than, than Flexbox, um, if I'm being honest, in my opinion. Okay, uh, next, uh, we want gap of 16. On large screens, grid call calls three. Otherwise, it's gonna be grid calls one, which will just be straight up and down. On large screens, gap X5. And on large screens, gap y12 so what that gap does um it just uh creates some separation between the um the the individual subcomponents. we might not actually need some of those things but that's just what i included before okay so let's go ahead and do each posts as post and let's make sure to close this up um we want a border border gray 200, padding of four, rounded large, and then, let's see, flex, flex, call, justify between. And I'll get rid of that. Now, so a little bit of this nope sorry i have to go back and forth and it's constantly like re-rendering okay so we're going to create the a the anchor tag with the href of blog and then post.path and we want to prefetch svelte kit come on come on you can do it svelte kit prefetch and then we want text xl text gray 900 and this is going to be post.title and then p of class mt3 and then text gray 500 and that's going to be post.excerpt and i don't know that i actually have the excerpts in here yeah they're just in the uh 
they're just in the blog post. So here, let's do excerpt is just going to be the first, I don't know, two sentences. Let's go down to this one. And I think this is the exact same thing. So I'll just copy paste. And then hello world. I don't know. That seems fine. Doesn't really matter. Excerpt there. There we go. Okay. So now that's what it looks like here. Um, we're going to add just a little bit more um, on the bottom. And this would work. Um, you know, we can see that. And this is the ugly styling that I had before that I'm going to update. Um, but let's just add in a little bit more. We have date information. We have author information. So we're just going to go ahead and, and handle that as well. Uh, MT6, just to give it a little bit of spacing. We're going to have a P with a class of text small, font medium, text gray 900. That will be post.author. And I will close this up. And then we are also going to have a um, time text small text gray 500 I think in the uh, in the blog post I have this as a div and then I have the time on the inside um, date time equals no this doesn't really matter this can just be a div I'm gonna update the blog post uh, we'll make this a P and this will just be post dot published there we go. Okay, that's what it looks like. If we increase this, you can see it kind of spaces out side by side. I mean, if you want to, you can you can get creative with this. You can do um, meet or small grid calls two, for example. And then when we scrunch down a little bit, it'll be two columns, and then it'll be one column. And you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here. Um, Okay, so that's good. That's pretty much um, that's pretty much what we're looking for. Uh, let's just look at the prefetch functionality. This this I've always thought is pretty cool for uh, for SvelteKit, and I know uh, trust me, I know this is not unique to SvelteKit, but I've always just thought this is cool. You can by simply adding in this little directive here, you can get the functionality where if we hover over the link, it goes and fetches the data necessary. And then when you click on it, you're automatically directed there, like instantaneously, which I just think, like I said, I think is very cool. Okay, now let's go back. Okay, so good. We've got our styling of our list view. So now let's take a look at our layout.svelte. Okay, this is just trash. So first thing I have to do, I'm going to delete blog date.svelte don't need this get rid of blog date um, I think I have the typography plugin installed I do not do I have it well did I do I have it in my dev dependencies and actually I want to just just check prettier for a second felt CSS okay we're good um, it does not look like I have Tailwind Typography. So let's go ahead and install it. npm i d at Tailwind CSS Typography. And then we're going to just install it into Tailwind. Or I don't know if this is installing it or whatever, but require at Tailwind CSS Typography. Nope. Save. Okay. So now we are going to go back into layout.svelte. Let's export let author as well, because we want author title and date on our, so let's get rid of this. Let's do div title, div author, div date, and slot. And I'll get rid of this. So this is what it looks like right now. Great, grand. This is what we care about. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm also going to import convert date from uh, libutils.dot 
js. Huh, blog post scrunched that all up into one thing. That's so funky. I'm just gonna drag this over. I don't know if you can see it. It just kind of scrunched everything up right here into one line, which I mean, I guess it still works. It's just weird. Moral of the story, don't don't let uh, Prettier automatically handle markdown files or whatever. I don't even know. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Um, so now we're going to want to um, create a, a wrapping div around all of these. So we're going to do relative MX auto max width pros overflow hidden BG white. And I need one or two more. And let's set some padding. PY16, PX4, small, PX6, and large, PX8. Um, and for what it's worth, I, I'm not coming up with a lot of these on my own. Um, I, I use Tailwind UI fairly heavily. Um, these are not pulled directly. Like I'm not copying pasting directly from Tailwind UI because um, they're premium uh, things, but, um, you know, I've kind of stripped down a lot of the extra stuff that they include, and I'm just trying to include like basic styling here. Um, okay. So now what we need to do is first thing I want is a back button. No, why do you always do that? You're annoying. Let's move this in here. Save. There we go. So first thing I want is a back button so that we, if I'm, if we're viewing this blog, we can just easily go back to the the prior page. So we're going to put in a span. It's going to have a class of block and cursor pointer. Um, 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 do I want this to be a button? Maybe. I don't know. Um, and we're going to say on click equals. And just we're going to do history dot back. So when we click it, we're just going to go and we had just put back in here, then we click this and we go back. And that's great and grand. I'm gonna add in just one uh, SVG here to make it look a little pretty. Heroicons.com, and then I think it's arrow left that I'm using. I don't, I don't really know. Let's do copy SVG. Um, let's see what it looks like. There we go. Um, what I do want to do though, is I want to make this SVG in line. There we go. And that'll work. Um, you know, you can, you can kind of clean it up a little bit. You can style a little bit, but this works for our, our purposes. Um, okay. So we've got that back button. Now I want to, so I want just the content to be in the pros sort of, um, wrapper that Tailwind includes. So what I'm going to do first for the title, I'm going to make this an H2 class equals margin Y of four text for XL and font semi bold. There we go. And now you notice it converted it to a serif font. The author is going to be P of class equals M Y four text gray 500. And I'm going to actually add the date in here as well. But what I'm going to do, convert date, date. And I'll get rid of this there. And that looks a little bit better. And now let's just add some styling for the actual, the pros stuff. Um, I don't know if you noticed in my blog, but there, so there's some really neat stuff you can do with, uh, with typography. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you can do this in generic CSS, but this is just, um, you know, it's just something easy about just doing this right here. I don't have to go back and forth. So we're going to do class of pros, class of pros, LG. And for the first letter, I want text three XL. I want a little bit bigger. And I also want first letter text blue 600. There. Um, Refresh, why is it not updating that? Oh, because it's just first, first letter. 
there we go. So you can see we've made the first letter just a little bit bigger, we've made it blue, and we're good to go. So now we've got our, our layout. So now it looks just a little bit better. And there was not much that we needed to do with this, right? Like it was kind of trash before, and I'll be honest with you, this index is, there's a little bit going on here, but if we just kind of break it down, this is um, spacing and location of things. Here we're just um, creating the header and we're adding a little bit of styling. We've got this border underneath. Um, if we remove tracking tight and font semi bold, and we just do it like this, it looks like that, which is fine, but let's just leave this in. Um, and then here we just, we're setting some, some margin here. Um, maybe we don't need these. Let's get rid of this. Refresh, large, yeah, I mean, that looks fine. It's, you know, it's really just styling, whatever, whatever works for you, okay? So let's, let's continue now. Um, we're gonna add two other things. The first thing we're gonna add is search functionality. So let's change the author of this blog post to Alice. And refresh. There we go. We notice that this one is written by Alice. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to add in functionality where you can search by author. So you can do something like author equals Alice. Right now it does nothing, but that's what we're going to add in here next. So we're back into our index file. And now we need to add in this extra argument of URL. Okay. So let's go to right here. We're going to say const author posts equals all posts dot filter post. So we need to do something. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to check to see if an author is passed in with the search parameters. So const author equals URL dot search params dot get author. Okay, great. If we don't have author, then return true. If we're not searching on a given author, then, then we just want to return all of them. <laughs> Otherwise, we want to return post.author equals author. Okay, great. Uh, but you notice nothing is actually happening over here. And the reason for that, even though we still have author equals Alice up here, if you're able to see that, and let me zoom this in just a little bit. There we go. Um, the reason for that is because we're still, we're still sorting on all posts. And what we need to do here is sort on author posts. There we go. Just by hitting save, now we can see that it's only returning um, the posts with the author of Alice. If we go back, this is our, our all. Now, the next thing that we need to add is just look, like right now, this doesn't do anything. Um, you know, you can click on this and it shows the, the blog post, but we don't want to have the user have to go up here and type author equals Alice. So what we want to do is we want to add functionality to our index.svelte right on the author here. We're just going to change this from a P. It's going to be an A and we're going to have href equals um, 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 author equals post dot author. Okay, sorry about that. I just had to handle something. Um, so now we've just added in this extra href here. Nothing has really changed in terms of the style because we've just, you know, the style is the same. But now you can see we have this ability. If you look at the very bottom, it uh, shows the URL that we're going to. We click this button and it shows author equals Alice. Great. Um, the only other thing that I want to include uh, in this video, because otherwise it's going to be terribly long, is a separate component for um, opening a URL in a new window. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to cover is, um, I'm sorry if I just said this, I had to pause and move back a bit, um, is um, the new URL component. So let's go ahead into our project into blog components, I'm going to just create um, new window URL.svelte. 
And this is gonna be fairly simple. Script, um, export let URL, export let description. And then if not description, description equals URL. And then all we're gonna do, a href equals URL and target equals blank. And this is going to be description. And that's it. Save, okay. Um, now, what we can do, let's create a, um, a custom URL. Oh, there's another update I need to make to the blog post. That's so weird how that happened. Okay, I'm gonna create a new blog post. We're gonna call it test custom url.md and I'm just going to paste some content in here. So, um, so what we're doing here, oh yeah, that's a long thing right there. That's so weird how that kind of double copied. I have to fix that. That's such a pain in the butt. Okay. So we need to um, if we go into here, uh, it's going to yell at us because new window URL is not defined. So this is, this is fairly simply. All we need to do is we need to call new window URL like we normally would. This is a Svelte component. MD Specs allows us to treat this just like it's a Svelte component, and it will, and it will handle it that way. Um, so all we need to do below our front matter is create a script tag. and then import new window URL from lib blog components. And then I think I just called it new window URL dot spelt. Save, and there we go. So you can actually use this custom component with this prop URL and this prop of description, last blog post, um, and if you hover over it, you can see on the very bottom, it has the, the link that's included. We click on it, it opens in a new page. And there we go. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do. I, I showed you this um, in the last one with the, uh, with the, the blog date or whatever, whatever that component was called, but this is a little bit more functional. Um, there, you can also, if you don't want to use this, and I'm just kind of flying off the handle here. If we get rid of this, and if we put this here, and then if we go into new window URL that's felt, and let's make this just a, just the slot, it should do the same exact thing. Yeah, there we go. So you don't have to pass them all in as props. You can use the, the slot and everything like that if you want to. So yeah, so that's kind of it. Um, it looks just a little bit better. Um, this doesn't, but if we go to blog, it looks just a little bit better and it's not posts, it's now just blog. Uh, yeah, and you can see we've got the ability to add search. And the thing that's nice about this is um, you can add pagination, you can do any sort of stuff like this um, using that sort of feature that we added in index.js. Uh, it doesn't just have to be the URL. You can, you know, you can have page number, um, current page, things like that. So yeah, um, I think that's it for, for this video. Um, I think I've been playing around a little bit with Nuxt content version two. I think I'm gonna do something similar in Nuxt content because I, I get the distinct impression it's a lot easier to do in that um, than, than it is in, in Svelkit. And I'm probably doing a lot of stuff wrong in here. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Um, but, you know, this is a very, very simple, basic introduction. You can kind of take this and you can, you can run with it a bit. Uh, so like I said, the blog post itself will be in the description below and the, um, the repo, I have it up in, I'm gonna just copy this, copy. 
this is not um, the this, the code that I've included here is not the stuff that's going to be in the repo. This was already committed um, not too long ago, and you should be able to see it there. So, okay, that's it. I will see you in the next video.